first like to give greetings to Bishop and Mother Blaze, and pastors, evangelists, brethren and saints in Christ Jesus. He is our all in all. He's our everlasting portion. King of kings, Lord of lords. And this afternoon I come in his presence as we have come to give unto him honor and glory. But we, we have something from God that, you know, we, we hold dearly. He has given us eternal life. And the world is such that, though this is a free gift, many find it hard to receive it, yet it is free. And those of us who have it, you know, it comes with a cost. So though it is free, it still has a cost. It takes our, <laughs> it takes our all to walk with the Lord. And it takes troubles and problems to walk in the Lord. You know, walking with Christ and being saved doesn't mean it's a walk in the park. It comes with troubles and trials and tribulations. <laughs> and and the thing is that these things doesn't come to mash us down. These, they come to strengthen us. And, and so there's that sort of like Strange thing of us um, having a special thing from God, but then it comes with a cost. And that cost doesn't cost us a cost, really. It gives us life, it gives us endurance. And without it, we will be. Weak and beggarly and faint along the way. But we thank God, though, though it is not always pleasant. The title says, all things work for good. Romans 8, 28. And we, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. All things work together for good. And God will orchestrate um, suffering. He'll operate um, problems, trials, and even sickness in our lives. Because, you no, know, it says all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. To them who are called according to the purpose. We, we, we were called by God. We didn't stumble into Christ. Or we didn't ramble into him. Or we, we, we were not chased and run for shelter. He, we, he called us. Special call. And, and it's, it's a simple thing. You, you, you've called us. But it comes with a, 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 a powerful thing that when we are called, we have to come. Hmm? And God called Moses. He, Moses make a lot of excuses. And, um, and, and, and I can't speak. And I can't do that. And God didn't wrestle with Moses. God called him. He said, well, I can't speak. God said, well, bring your brother. He, he, he do a lot of talking. Bring him. So he brought, along, he brought along here. And, but if you notice through all of Moses' situation, Moses did a lot of talking, probably even more than Aaron. Because, you see, God has called us. Hmm? When, when, when we, were, when we were, were preached to or when we were witnessed to, it was not just an individual witnessing to you. It was, the, it was the word and the spirit of God was witnessing to you, not that person. It was God. And, and that word, and that word and spirit, when we saw ourselves sinful, for that's essential, we had to, to see ourselves sinful and unworldly. And, and then we were then convicted by that word and the spirit of God that we were surrendered to God. So he has called us, 
No one, God called to say, I'm not coming. You can say you're not coming, but in the end, God will win. Because he called you. He called Moses. He called many men. And they said, I'm not adequate. I'm not this. I'm not, I, I know I can't do this. You know, I'm not so and so and so. In the end, they had to come along because God called them. All things work together. And he has got to auction every different situation in our lives. Many are present situations in our life that we may be, he may accomplish his work in us. You see, he, 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 has, to, he, he has to churn us up. He has to work on us. He has to squeeze us. Yeah? If you're going to make bread, you just don't mix up the flour and... And then put it, you got to knead the bread. You got to put some elbow grease in, the, in that bread. You got to squeeze it. You got to dash it on the table. You got to press on it. You got to reel, you got to work on it in order for it to, when it's baked, it produces a good quality taste. And God will call us. It is his, it is his effectual, loving, purposeful call that he has called us out of the world. And when, 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 and when we are called then, we will follow. We will follow, brethren. Because you have called us. And when you call us, he's not going to leave us alone, unprotected. He will, he will be over us, but all that will come, he will allow it to come. You know, we, um, we often pray that to bind, you know, bind the devil. We pray and we preach that to bind the devil. Can you really bind the devil? No, we cannot bind the devil. Do you realize that if we were to bind the devil, we would not have a, we would not have a testimony of God. We would not have. When God, when God sent the devil to perplex Job, um, Job, Job didn't bind the devil. No, not could he bind the devil. He had to go through all the trials and the trials and the near death experience. He had to go through all of those things. And at the end, what he said, I have heard of the Lord. Now I have known him. If he had bind the devil, he would not know the Lord. If he had bind the devil, he would not have a testimony of knowing the Lord. So he cannot, we cannot bind the devil. Even as Christ was, um, on, the, was on the cross and, and um, he was about to be uh, crucified. Even before he reached there. And um, Peter said, well, no, Lord, you're not going to. And Peter was wanting to say, I'll be with you and so on. So um, Christ turned to him and said, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Because it was Satan in Peter telling him not to go to the cross. So, and even Christ were to bind the devil, he would be cheating. Because he had to go through that temptation of Christ in order for us to bring salvation. So if he had bind the devil, there'd be no salvation. Hmm? He had to go through the, the cross. He had to go through the, the trial, the temptation. He had to go through that horrible situation. Both physically and spiritually, he went through a horror. And he could not bind the devil because he had to go to, the, to bring to us salvation. Hmm? He had, he, 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 we, we, got to, we got to um, walk with the Lord. Um, sometimes up, sometimes down. Sometimes don't know where we are. Sometimes discouraged. Sometimes we feel like turning our back. But you know, he, he is with us. He's with us. He's holding us. He's directing us. It comes with problems and trials and tribulation. You know, there's the, there were time in England when, when, the, when, the, the method, when the, those who were broken away from the um, um, Roman Catholic um, organization, they, they become the, the reformists. And they, they brought out and they came out of that. When the laws in England changed, that they could not no longer um, worship secretly. If they wanted to worship, they had to worship according to the, like the Church of England and so on and so forth. But, but some broke away and worshiped God secretly. 
And, and one of them was a case where, of the man who, who he, he was, he, they were had to hide away in, in barns and in the woods and in the forest to have service. And one particular man who was a preacher was in one of those. And he was, uh, had a group of people in, the, in a barn, so he would come and preach them secretly in that barn. You know, he's a man, he's, he had a wife, the wife is pregnant, the wife wanted him not to go preaching because she knew that he would be arrested. And she said, if you get arrested, who's going to look after you? Me and the child. And, and, but he still persisted going and preaching. And one day he went and he started preaching and he, he went to knock and they, they understand the knock and they let him in. And he started to preach. Before long, another knock was knocking. They didn't recognize that knock. The knock said, said we are of the king. We come to arrest you in the name of the king. And he was arrested. And in prison for 12 years. And in that 12 years, he wrote a book, The Pilgrim Pro Progress. That was John Bunyan. And uh, that book became, that book became a, a very special book that many brought many to Christ. So out of his suffering and, and, and uh, imprisonment, he, he wrote a book that many came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he, you know, it, it, it is a, it, it's a, it's a word not always of comfort, but it's a, it's a walk of assurance in God. Where, whether he allow or not allow, it is a comfort knowing that God is with us through it all. That's why we can sing a song, through it all, through it all. I learned to trust in Jesus, through it all. Hmm? Never promise, he never, never promises that we're going to have a bed of roses. Christ, the, the, the creator of the world, when he came and they, and they came to him, some said, Lord, I want to follow you. He said, he said to them, the foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the son of man have no way to lay his head. And yet he is part of the creation of the world. And when he came, he had no way as such to lay his head. He had no comfort that we have a comfort today. He said, the foxes have holes, the birds have nests, but the son of man have no way to lay his head. Yet he was the creator of the, sin, the whole world that he came into. But he didn't come to be a comforted. He didn't come to be, uh, as it were, make, to make life easy and to smooth. He came to suffer. He came to bleed. He came to die to bring us back to that true comfort in having salvation and having been born. That is the true comfort that he came to purchase. So he is our he, he, he is our comforter. That's why he is our comforter. And he, he is our Lord. And he is our all. What we're going through now in this world. will one day come to an end. And we shall know and experience him fully then. When he comes for us. And put up the next one. Genesis 41. 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph. See I have set thee over the land of Egypt. And we are familiar with. With that, with Jacob. Joseph being the, one of the sons of Jacob. Jacob had two wives, Leah and Rachel. He loved Rachel. And obviously Joseph was the son of Rachel. So he loved Joseph and gave him a coat of many colors. But his other brothers did not love him. And they plot on one occasion um, to kill him. Because he, he, he would report back to his father his brother's wrongdoing. And uh, he had a couple of dreams that make them, real, make them look as though they would one day bow down to him. And they resented all of that. So an uh, opportunity came and they, when he came to sex, sort them out. And when the son came, he said, let us kill him. But one of the brothers begged, no, don't kill him, he's our brother. You see, you see how God is working? If not, they would have killed him. But one begged, no, he's our brother, don't kill him. And they, 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 they then held him, put him in a pit, and then one brother thought that when the time came, he would let him out. But, but that didn't happen. Some, some travelers, some Ishmaelites come going down to Egypt, uh, was coming, the, the soul Joseph to him, to them. And he went to Egypt, and he, we know the story quite well. But then it came to a point, that he became, he did some marvelous things. He interpreted dreams. He was, he was faithful in, in prison. He obeyed. But then after that, Pharaoh promoted him to be the, uh, the leader of Egypt. Hmm? And to cut things short, there came a time when he made known to his brother who he is. And they, they were scared. Because now, their brother that, could, could, that was 
what they could kill. Now it turned way around. He could kill them all as a prince of Egypt. He could have them all destroyed. They, they were scared. But Joseph said, no, don't, 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 don't be scared. Don't be scared. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourself that you sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Hmm? So in his suffering, hmm, which is small, there was a greater suffering coming. They could have starved to death because of the famine. But God knew in advance it was going to happen. And God allowed him, Jonah, to be sold into Egypt. And to be made up a prince in Egypt. And to now be able to help them. The, the one that they hated and the one that they were going were gonna to kill, he is now the one who is helping them from starvation. Because the animals die and, and many would have died from that drought, that famine. But God set him in place so that he would not, so that they would not um, die. Another thing you've got to realize is this, that God had put a promise on those um, the, 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 the descendants of Abraham, that they will, he will bless them and they will multiply them. But they come a point now, they were about to die. But God is, 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 is working mysteriously in their lives. God is working mysteriously in our lives as well as Christians. Oftentimes, we, we may come, that, we come to the end because there's no more to go. But God, the God that we serve, the God that we, we walk with. The God that answers our prayer. The God that will be always with us. It is always hard to think that God is always with us. Because at times we are going through things, we, we say God is not with us. And, and that's the time that we are more earnestly um, crying up to God. And that's the time God wants us to be at that place to be crying out to him when there's troubles and trials. Second Corinthians 12, 7 to 10, please. Unless I should be exalted above my, my measure through the abundance of a revelation, God was given, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of his revelation. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. God has used Paul in such marvelous, miraculous way. It, was be, it, was easy for him to be, it would have been easy for him to show off and to boast in himself and to be proud. But what God did, God put a, a, put a Unless it should be exalted through the buzz, they were given to me a thorn in the flesh. Hmm. Not necessarily a physical thorn. It's some have different um, reasons. It seems as though that the, the, the devil was um, raging rampant into the Corinthian church, the church that he loved. But they gave him so much trouble. They lived so, so, um, so sinful. But yet he loved them and he, and he, and he prayed and he gave them um, epistles. We have first and second. But history tells us that he actually wrote, th he wrote three epistles. He, 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 he confronted them for the sinful. They, they were still going after the prostitutes. Some were still having their, their, their father's wife and, 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 and others going to worship false gods and all, all sorts of different situations they, they were going into. And Paul had to deal with them. He wrote, he wrote, the, he wrote the first and then he wrote another that caused a, a, a bit of a confrontation with him and the church. And so he had to, as it were, walk away from them in that hot confrontation. And he walked away feeling very, 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 dis very, very um, uh, disheartened and, and very displeased. But, when he, but he wasn't giving up. He went away and he wrote them yet an, another, an, and, uh, um, another letter. They call it the surveil letter. And he was, really, he was really kind of very concerned about this letter because it seemed as though it was a very harsh letter to them and, and, and give it to 
to, to one of his, one of his um, co-workers to take it down to him. And he wanted to know what, how, how were they faring. And when, when, the, when the person came back and let him know that they had repented, then he wrote another, which was the third. But the, 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 the letter, the severe letter, have got lost. So he only got the one and two. And, he's, and with that, he then, he then consoled them for being so harsh with them and letting them know that the situation is that he loved them. That's why he was so concerned and so vigilant and wanted them to walk in the right way that God wanted them to walk. Troubles as Christians. Not all, and we, 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 we get troubles in all different forms. We, 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 we are not exempt from troubles as a Christian. They will come. And God allowed them to come. Peter, first Peter 5.10. Please. By the God of all grace, who have called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. The God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. That's what he of God. Christ of, he, 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 he will expect pain, troubles. He will expect being attacked by the enemy. He will expect being, um, as it were, um, neglected. And no, um, ignored and, and, and being uh, go through all sorts of uh, mental situation. But God who have called us, he have called us. He not call us to the, a happy, joyous. He, he call us into the, 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 the into into his into his eternal glory. And we we are into that eternal glory, but we, we are not completely there. We we we're still in the flesh, and we're still in an evil world, and so we will have problems. But we are in Christ. We are born in Him. We are baptized in Him spiritually, and we are in Him. But they, we are in the world, and the world hates us. Because the world have hate Christ, the world hate us. And Satan is always after us because we are of Christ. Hmm? But, he, but he's saying to us, but, but God grace who have called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After ye have suffered a while, after ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. You've got to go through problem, you've got to go through upheaval. And then he will settle, he will settle us in his mighty spiritual way. Romans 8, 17 and 18. And the children, then heirs, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that ye suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And if children, which we are, then heirs. Heirs of God, join heirs with Christ. It so be that we suffer with him, that we may also glorify with him. Hmm? We are heirs in Christ. We are, we are not illegitimate. We are not, as the word, as the word used, ambassadors. Paul is using that situation because at that time, um, a man could have his, his legal wife, but he can have slaves and other women that he lived with. Now, if he were to die, his, 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 legacies, his, his legacies goes to the son that is born to the, to the wife. But the, the one that is born to illegitimate, he will get nothing. So the one that is born, the born of the wife is the heir. This afternoon, we are heirs of Christ. We are entitled to God's um, eternal glory. We are entitled to God's glory and ble blessings. We, 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 don't have, we, we don't got to be, as it were, um, as a, a begging. We come to Christ. We have, we, ha we have, we have, we have in him. We have in him. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also glorify with him. What do we mean by glorify? To be made perfect. 
<laughs> we, 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 we have that state of glorification already, but, the, the, but the, the, as it were, the true glorification will come when Christ comes back to this world for us. He will judge the ungodly. He will award the Christian. We will be glorified. We will be made, as it were, without no sin, without no, no, no faults, to be like him. We are, we, we are like him now. That's what we must say. That we, we see through a glass, a mirror, dimly. Mm, but the time will come when we shall see clearly Christ. Now we see Christ dimly as Christians. As, as a, but says that in a mirror, you know, today, then there were mirrors made of metal that were shiny and they used as mirror. Today we have glass that we can see perfect. So, you know, so we see through a glass dimly, but now that time will come we shall see him as he is. And then we shall know him. We know him now. We see him now. But we should know him better, perfectly then. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. That is Christ. The world hate him. He did no evil. He did no wrong. He did no unrighteousness. He came for the souls of the saints of men, for, for to know men to, to come to know him as Lord. And they hated him for that. It, it, we see how the world is, is corrupt. How the world is um, you know, so far from God that Christ came into the world to save sinners and to do something that is good, but they hated him for it. Next one, that, that's Peter 4, 12, 13, please. Be beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened to you. Peter is warning us and the church that don't think it is something haphazard happened to you. That is something strange happened to you. It, it, is, it is something that we've got to expect. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened to you. We are being tried. We are being tested. By the fiery trials of life. If we do not have troubles and trials, then we will be spiritually weak. We'll be spiritually weak. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm in church for a while, and, and I've seen um, brethren who are um, brethren, and their lives are weak because they did not live a life unto God. They did not live that life, a quality life unto God. You know, and their lives then become um, weak. But to we, our lives are, are to be that, as it were, the, the, the shining beacon to the world that they may see the way. They, see the, the, they can see the cliff. That, they, that if they go forward, they, they will fall. They should see if it is smooth. They should see if it is rough. God has given them um, that, 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 the word to, 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 to in order to see him. But many do not want to see him. Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 12, please. Yea, and all that will love, will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. And all, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But be not dismayed. God is with you. And we are not bearing those things on our, on our, on our own. God is helping us bear them up. He, 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 he is the anchor. He, he's the he, he's he's uplifter of us. You know, you're going through all sorts of situations. And sometimes you go through a lot of situations that is very unpleasant. But he, he has not left us like a jellyfish. He, he is, our, as it were, our, our prop, our backbone, our uplifter, that we may not fall. Brother, because if we were to fall, we would fall into sin. But when God saves us, we are not to fall into sin. As a matter of fact, we cannot fall into sin when we are born again, brethren, because Christ is holding us up. We may stumble and we may falter, but we will not fall because God is holding up and because God has called us. You've got to understand that, Clay, that God has called us. There is no falling. 
You, know? you, you can be aboard a ship and you may, you may fall and trip and, and break your arm or break your leg, but you haven't fallen into the sea and drown. You can fall, that kind of fall. But there's not that everlasting fall that we can fall where there's no recovery. Because Christ on the cross has, has, has did it all. He really had conquered sin, brethren. Let's get it clear. You know, he has conquered sin. So that's what I said. There's therefore now no more condemnation to them that in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh and after the spirit. And if you're saved, you're walking after the spirit. There's therefore now no more. There's no more falling to a point where we cannot be retrieved by God when you're saved, brethren. Some so yes, so so was a, there was a Christian and they did that and now they backslide. Now that leads to there's, there's a situation here with, with sometimes that may be the case or not not maybe the case. When when a altar, when a, a, preach, a preacher a preacher preach and all the call is given, some brethren come sometimes help go and usher unbelievers up to the altar. We should not be doing those things because when you go usher someone up to the altar, are they coming because you usher them or are they coming because they're convicted by the word that was preached? We don't know which because you've ushered them up. And then they ush, you usher them up and then they walk with the Lord for a while and the next minute they fall away and they say, oh yes, he was saved and he fall away. The question was, was he really saved in the first place? Hmm? You see, all of those things we, we got to look at. But when we let the word of God do its miraculous, mighty work, then there's proof and shown that his work is, uh, is involving us, his work is in us and changing us from day to day to be better and better, even though we're going through troubles. May God bless you in Jesus' name. And now, may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Rejoice and be glad in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.